cousin likes it. Oh, I'm sure she will. And thanks again for letting me invite her. I'm glad to help. I know how terrible she must feel after getting her divorce. I know how I felt the day John and I were divorced. He told me how sorry he was that our marriage hadn't worked out. And he kissed me tenderly and left. I couldn't help but cry. It was the first time I'd ever seen John skipping. <laughs> invite Wilma to the party? Sure, why not? Well, it is the premiere of your show. I thought maybe you'd all rather watch it alone. Oh, of course not. I just hope she can stand it. You have no idea how nervous we all are. Really? Oh, oh if the critics don't like the show, we've taken a vow. We're going to commit group suicide. Then maybe you don't want us there. Oh, nonsense. The more the merrier. <laughs> oh, we better get the TV set fixed before the party. What's the matter with it? Well, either the sound has gone out or Maud has become mute. <laughs> Better call the repairman. Oh, I bet that's Wilma now. Wilma, how are you? Divorced. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Oh, Mitzi, how could Harry divorce me? I was his wife. <laughs> Now you'll get over it. Never. Never, Mitzi, never. Everything I do, everything I see reminds me of Harry. You must be Joyce. Yes, I am. How do you do? She reminds me of Harry. <laughs> or Wilma, maybe you'd like to go upstairs and unpack. Oh, Joyce, you were so kind to invite me to come to California. So considerate. <laughs> Wilma, you've just got to forget about Harry. Uh, I can't. I can't get that big lug out of my mind. Wilma, believe me, you'll get over this, I promise. Listen, I know just how you feel. I was the same way when I got my divorce, and look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> Wilma, you've just got to pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and buckle down, Winsocky. That's what Joyce did. Then you're happy, dear? Absolutely. She's the happiest woman I know. Oh, sure, she gets a little lonely now and then. And of course, sometimes she wishes that the phone would ring and it won't, and she wishes someone would ask her out and they don't. And of course, she'd like to get married again and can't. But just because there's no hope, she doesn't dwell on it. You know something? If Joyce can do it, so can I. To hell with Harry. I'm going to be happy, too. Good for you, Wilma. That's the spirit. <laughs> I am just going to learn to live without him. As far as I'm concerned, he never even existed. As far as I'm concerned, oh, please, God, let it be Harry. <laughs> I see you for a minute. Excuse me. What is it, Doug? I've got the ad layout for the first episode of Undercover Woman. You're going to love it. Undercover Woman can be tough. She can be dangerous. She can be trouble. But she can also be neat and nifty. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're trying to get the kids to watch. Doug, we're not trying to cater to children. We're trying to present an adult dramatic program that will appeal to people of sophistication and taste. <laughs> Neat and nifty will be fine. This is the outfit I wear for Joyce in the nightclub scene where I jump up and down in the guy's face. <laughs> <laughs> 
beat his head on the piano and then throw him through a plate glass window. Keep it up. When I sit down, it hurts. You want to be an artist? You got to suffer. Crazy Fletcher. Trouble, John? No, Fletcher. Oh, good. I thought maybe we were canceled. <laughs> While we're waiting for Joyce, I thought we'd try rehearsing the second act. Hugo, will you read Joyce's part? Oh, sure. Uh, don't be afraid to tell me if I do something wrong, John. I can take criticism. Just lay it on. Don't worry, Fletcher. I'll be the first to tell you. Good. But go easy, okay? Yes, Fletcher. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. Action. Sergeant, you must be crazy to be thinking of quitting the force. She's right. You're the greatest undercover woman we've ever had. I'm sorry. It's time for me to hang it up. I'm going to wait for Mr. Wright to come along. Some of his children I'll be proud to have. I never told you guys this before, but I always wanted to be a mother. Oh, I know it won't be easy, but cut! What do you mean, cut? I just got started to roll. It has nothing to do with you, Hugo. The scene is awful. It's gonna have to be rewritten. I think I know how we can add a little bit more dramatic impact to the scene. How's that? What if I cry during the scene and wear a bikini? <laughs> Let me think about that a second. No. I'll have it rewritten, and you'll get the new pages in this evening. Sorry I'm late, John. I was showing Missy's cousin around L.A. Uh, Wilma Todd, this is John Elliott. Hi. How do you do? Well, this is where we shoot our show, Wilma. That's the police station where I play undercover woman. Police stations always remind me of Harry. Harry was her husband. They just got divorced. No. Was Harry a policeman? No, he used to get arrested a lot. Why don't you sit down while I talk to John, okay? Sure. I'll go sit by the phone. Maybe Harry will call. It isn't a real phone, dear. If God wants it to ring, it'll ring. John, I don't know what to do about her. She's been staying with me for a week now, and every day she gets more and more depressed. I can understand that. No need to be nasty, John. I apologize for being late. Actually, it doesn't matter. The entire second act has to be rewritten. You'll have to learn it tonight. A new second act? I can't memorize that much by tomorrow. Not with Wilma in the house. Why not? Well, she follows me around like a lost puppy. I can't, I can't get rid of her. Well, why don't you tie her to a tree? John! <laughs> Sorry. You could get Mitzi to take her out for the evening. Missy's got a date. John, you could take Wilma out. Uh, Sorry, Joyce. A friend is directing a production of a new comedy, and I promised to attend. A comedy? That's perfect. Joyce. I guess she won't. It'll cheer her up. Wilma! Joyce. Yes? She won't get in the way. She won't be a problem. If she doesn't like the play, she can sit in the phone booth. Joyce. Uh, Wilma? <laughs> guess what? John would like to take you to the theater tonight. Oh, gee, I don't know. Seeing a play is liable to depress me even more. What play is it? Death of a Salesman. <laughs> He's teasing, dear. It's a comedy. I love comedy. Then you go. Sure. Harry used to love comedies, too. <laughs> <laughs> the TV repairman. The set's over here. Gotcha. Something's wrong with the sound. Gotcha. Used to be all you had to do was slap it twice and it would come right on, but not anymore. Gotcha. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Washington, the president met with members of the... That'll be $32. <laughs> all you did was slap it three times. I know. It's a great business. We'll send you a check, okay? Sure, why not? You know, maybe I'm crazy, but I trust people. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, good morning. The TV repairman just left. The set's fixed. Good. $32. $32? What was wrong with it? Oh, it's very technical. <laughs> Hey, Mitzi, congratulate me. I did it. What did you do? Memorized 37 pages of script last night. Wow. Of course, I couldn't have done it without John's help. 
I got him to take Wilma out. Did she tell you? No, she hasn't been down yet. Oh, she was so excited. She got a new hairdo. I even loaned her that old fox stole that John's mother gave me. <laughs> of course, Wilma didn't want to wear it either. She claimed one of the fox heads reminded her of Harry. I think I know which one. <laughs> Joyce, I had no idea my cousin was going to be such a problem. If you want, I'll go upstairs right now and have a talk with her. Oh, that's not necessary. We have to remember, this is a trying time she's going through. The poor woman needs all the help we can give her. Good morning. <laughs> Wilma! Are you just getting in now? I don't know why they said rabbit's feet are lucky. This little guy did just great. What a night. Hot damn. <laughs> I think I'll go feed Boots. I already fed Boots. Then I'll go watch him burp. <laughs> You didn't tell me what a sweet, dear, warm, kind, considerate man that John really is. Are we talking about the same John? Little guy with a fuzzy lip? You know what I've decided? I am going to make a brand new start. I am moving out here to California so that I can be close to you and to Mitzi and especially to John. You know, I think I could get emotionally involved with him. It's wonderful. Oh, you'll, you'll love it out here. Especially if you like earthquakes. <laughs> oh, Joyce, I, I, hope I, I hope I'm not being tactless. I'm sure this is an absolutely silly idea, but there's no chance that you're still interested in John, is there? No. Of course not. That's absolutely silly. Oh, good. Because I was hoping he was going to ask me out again. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yes, wonderful. I don't suppose he could ever take the place of Harry. Harry who? <laughs> Gosh, I sure hope we get good ratings tonight. My wife will just die if this show isn't a big hit. She really loves it. By the way, where is Mrs. Huff? Home. She didn't want to miss the football game. <laughs> Joyce, I apologize for my cousin I hope you're not mad at me because of her Of course not Why should you be mad? Oh, Mitzi thinks just because her cousin stayed out all night with John That I'm upset with her <laughs> Not at all, dear I couldn't be mad at you Isn't she terrific? Oh, yeah, she is Pound for pound, nicest woman I ever met not that I'm interested, but I'm sure there's a perfectly innocent reason why they were out all night. Sure, they could have run out of the gas. Sure, they could have had a flat tire. Or maybe something went wrong with the transmission. Or maybe they shacked up. <laughs> I don't know a lot about cars. <laughs> well, whatever they did, I couldn't care less. Oh, aren't you just a little bit curious? Not at all. That's true, she told me so. She even swore on John's life. <laughs> okay, maybe I was a little jealous. But after seeing John here tonight, I'd know nothing happened. Of course not. I mean, I can tell. I've been married to him for five years. Oh, right. And if nothing happened in five years, it's certainly not going to happen in one night. <laughs> Tracy, why don't you serve the parfaits? Okay. Sweet girl. Remind me about her later if we run out of firewood. <laughs> Joyce, I wish you wouldn't try to kid me. I know you're upset with Wilma. What makes you say that? You've been very rude. Just because she asked for seconds, you didn't have to stand up and yell, suey, suey, suey. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll grant you. I, that was rude, and I apologize. And I'll try to be nicer. Promise. Thank you. So, how are you two getting along? We were getting along just fine. <laughs> I was just telling Johnsy here that I was going to have a very hard time finding an apartment in California. Oh. <laughs> so, Puss Face has offered to help me, and I'm sure he knows his way around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's almost time. Don't you think we should turn on the TV set? What time is it? Good morning, everybody. Hi, 
right, Doug. Oh, John. Uh, John, we're in big trouble. What's wrong now, Doug? What's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. There are 126 million television sets in the United States. Guess how many were not tuned in to Undercover Woman last night? How many? Guess. I don't know. Well, just take a wild guess. I have no idea how many. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Listen, everybody, no matter what the ratings and the reviews were like, we've still got a show to do, and we have a terrific script this week. I don't know why, but I particularly like the scene in the museum where Joyce is captured, dragged into a dungeon, and then tortured, beaten, and whipped. Boy, she gets all the good parts. Look, the rest of you can take a break while I explain the scene to Joyce. Before you say anything, John, I'd like to apologize. That parfait falling on Wilma's head last night was strictly an accident. Are you sure, Joyce? Positive. I meant to get her with a hot soup. <laughs> Joyce, there's no reason for you to be upset with Wilma or me. Remember, it was your idea that we go out together. And I suppose it was my idea to stay out all night. No, well, that was my idea. Or was it Wilma's? What's the difference? It was a great idea. Okay, John. I have no right to be annoyed. It's your business. I promise I won't bring it up again. Good. Now, let me explain what we'll need in this scene. Now, gentlemen, if you'll move the flat. <laughs> now, after the chase scene, you'll be captured, thrown into this torture chamber, dragged onto this rack, and flogged until you're unconscious. It'll just take a couple of minutes to just lay back and enjoy it. This looks a little difficult. John, why don't you show me what you want me to do? It'll be very simple, Joyce, even for you. After you're placed on the rack, two goons will lock your wrists in these clamps. Like, like so? Yes. Uh -huh. Be sure you're not uh, wearing a watch, because as you can see, the uh, wrists have to fit very snugly. Oh, like that? Right. Uh-huh, got it. Okay. Well, now, isn't this going to hurt my ankles? Uh, not if you put your feet in these holes, like right this. And then what, they lock put it over here. Right. Lock it in? Exactly. Of course, your captors won't actually turn the crank. They won't? No, they'll just start to turn it, then we'll cut to you, and you'll pretend to be an excruciating pain. Do you think you can do that? I'll just try and remember our marriage. <laughs> that should do it. Now, if you'll uh, undo the clamps. John, while I have you here, <laughs> could I ask you one question? What is it? What exactly went on with you and Wilma the other night? Joyce, you promised you wouldn't ask. Oh, one more question. What is it? How does this work? <laughs> All right, Joyce. If you must know, I spent the evening with Wilma listening to her tell me what a wonderful, kind, and sensitive woman you were. And that took all night? Yes, it turned into a debate. <laughs> Joyce, you might as well realize I'm not going to tell you if anything happened or didn't happen. It's none of your business. You're right, John. It is none of my business. Now, what happened? Joyce, please, you're hurting my pants. <laughs> Look, there's no reason to be jealous. I feel nothing for Wilma. I only felt sorry for her. Oh, and what about helping her look for an apartment? Just doing a good deed. Well, one good turn deserves another. <laughs> Joyce, please, my navel's coming undone. <laughs> Believe me, if I'm interested in anyone, it's you. Oh, really, John? Or are you just pulling my leg? <laughs> You've meant more to me than any woman I've ever known, and even though we're divorced, you still do. I had no idea you felt that way. It's true. I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I'm so jealous. I, I suppose it's because I've never really gotten over losing you. It's difficult to explain. Perhaps we could have dinner tonight and discuss it. What do you say, John? I'd sooner die. <laughs> Suit yourself, dear. I'll pick you up at eight. <laughs> You're sweet, John, and I thought I was going to have to twist your arm. <laughs> Joyce, haven't you forgotten something? Oh, yes, of course. <gasps> I can't tell you how I'm looking forward to going out with you tonight. It's 
Especially now that you're taller. <laughs> I'll see you later, poor space. <laughs> Carry those? My pleasure. I want to thank you for everything. We're going to miss you. I really hate to see you leave. Oh, thanks, Joyce. And thanks for helping me pack. And helping me dress. And calling the cab. And telling him to burn rubber. If you see John, will you give him my new address and telephone number? It's as good as done. Well... A brand new life, and I can't tell you how happy I am. Imagine me in a singles apartment. Yeah. If you don't hear from me for a while, don't worry. I'm probably just resting. Oh, Joyce. Mitzi, I want to thank you for everything. You have helped make me the happiest woman in the world. I'm a new person. I am born again. Oh, please, God, let it be Harry. We hope you've enjoyed Nick at Night's Women of Television tonight. But don't worry, you can join Jeannie, Sam, Lucy, that girl, Mary, Rhoda, Phyllis, and Betty again next Sunday night. Good. That sounds perfect. How nice. Only on Nick at Night. Bye.